this section, we set up the surfaces for things like sub-trim, travel adjust, and of course reversing, and even advanced functions like balance. With surface setup, the screen that we show here, you'll see that all the surfaces uh, um, appear on the screen. And in order to access that surface, you simply touch that particular surface. Let me start with the right aileron. Touch the right aileron. So the first thing I'll do is I'll go through the entire section for the right aileron. So the first thing I test is the right aileron going in the right direction. If I give right aileron, it should go up and it does. By the way, if it didn't, I'm going to go ahead and hit reverse. Now you'll see that it's going in the opposite direction. That's the wrong direction. So it was in the right place in the first place. So normal is correct. The next thing is sub-trim. I'll hit the sub-trim screen and you notice that there's a slider at the bottom and there's a value of zero. I'll take a look and it looks like that aileron's just a little bit low. I can either hit the plus button to make fine adjustments or I can hit the slider to make large adjustments. In this case, I'll get it close with the slider and then I'll tap until the trailing edge is even with the wing. And there's sub trim. In this case, right 12. Then I'll go to the travel. So travel adjust. Generally, you would go to your manual and you would give a full deflection and you would increase or decrease the travel to match the travel that's in your manual. And by the way, notice that you can independently adjust the right travel versus the left travel. So I'll go here and I'll select the right, right travel. That's highlighted in orange. I'll give a full right command and you can see that I can increase or decrease the right versus left. So you'll be able to uh, independently adjust your right versus your left or your up versus your down using that section. So there's travel adjust for the right aileron. Also notice again, you know, we have the video here that'll help you when you're, uh, when you're watching, but if you're out in the field and you ever get confused about how to adjust this, how to navigate this, you'll notice that there's a help on the top right hand corner. The first section again will give you the um, navigation points as far as how to independently adjust right and left or how to adjust. And then the second section is a description of what travel adjust is, how and why you would use travel adjust. So let me go ahead and get out of there. Okay, then the next thing is balance. What balance is typically used for is if you have, a, a say for example, a wing that has two servos. So when you have two servos attached to one surface, as in a lot of aerobatic airplanes, large aerobatic airplanes, they use two servos to drive one surface. You'll notice that at, at different positions that the servos actually bind. What balance allows you to do is independently adjust the output in seven different points throughout the stroke and you can tune the output of each of the servos so that they don't bind. In this case, of course, we have one um, servo per surface, so it's not so important in this case. In fact, there would be no use for it in this case. But if I had two servos in this wing, I would adjust those such that I would go to, you know, one quarter stick, one half stick, and so on, and I would adjust the actual servo output by simply grabbing that point and increasing or decreasing the point. So in fact, I can do it here. Right now it's on center. So I can grab the center point and I can adjust it up and down. And as you can see, it's making minute changes in the aileron. If I, you know, went to this next point here, you know, and I change it here, that's going to change it a little bit to the right. See, I can move it up and down to the right and so on. So that's what that function is used for. Again, on this airplane, um, no use for it, uh, but that's what the e-balance function is for. So that um, gets you set up with your surface setup. Then I'll go back and I'll adjust my left aileron, again for your reverse sub-trim travel and balance. Then I'll go back and do the same thing with the elevator. So there's elevator, reverse sub-trim. Let's see, is the elevator going the right direction? No, elevator's going the wrong way. That's well, elevator, not down. So I'll hit reverse. Boom, now up is up, down is down. Sub-trim looks pretty darn close. Uh, travel adjust, that's pretty close to what the manual says and balance I'm not going to use. I'll go back to the rudder. So I notice that my rudder, right rudder, yep, that's going the right way. Sub-trim, it's actually off quite a bit. Let me adjust my sub-trim here. So it looks like sub-trim's there. I'm going to trim it a little closer. That looks pretty much right on. I'm going to get out of there. And of course, uh, travel. 
That's like full stop to stop. Hopefully you get the idea how this works. Um, you know, if I were doing this carefully, of course, I would have a ruler or a um, throw gauge, and I would very accurately measure each one of the um, settings for travel and for sub-trim, very accurately get everything sorted out. But here's where you make those settings. Um, then when you're done, notice that the exclamation mark is still there. And so be sure that you get the spinning um, icon and it's open and that, then you know that the function has been saved. So once you're finished with surface setup, that concludes the initial setup in the wizard. So in order to exit that um, wizard, on the top right hand corner in the orange box, there's a square box. Press that and it'll save the model settings. It'll end up saving all those settings that we just went through. And after we have everything set up, what, it's a good idea to go through and double check to be sure that your sub trim, you know, your travel on everything, and uh, the direction in everything is working in the same direction. Basically double check to be sure that everything is functioning like it normally would. We call this initial setup because it's basically all the things you need to do to set the model up prior to setting up the AS3X system. So essentially you could go out and fly the airplane um, like it is now. Um, however, uh, you know, everything will be working in the right direction. But of course the real advantage comes in this final setup that we're going to talk about in the next few um, sections when we're actually adding the AS3X functions and then adding exponential and dual rate and uh, also about the flight modes. So this concludes the initial setup and let's check out the final setup.